Okay. Uh, thank you very much for coming. Uh, let's start off by presenting myself. Uh, my name is João Martins. I've been working as a software developer at CERN since 2022 uh, in the site management team in the business computing group. And today I'm here to talk a bit more about test containers, integration tests, and how can we improve our testing workflow in applications, like brand new applications in this case. Before I do so, I want to introduce what's test containers and how is it different from more typical and old school ways of doing integration tests. And test containers is a library that allows us to create uh, disposable lightweight containers to run real dependencies and make our integration tests run against the real systems, like for example, databases or message brokers in this case. Um, also, we profit to say that in this case, like we have a, a container, so the isolation and the consistency are also good to have. This is quite different from integration tests running, for example, in an integration test DB because there's no infrastructure regarding the database state and keeping the, um, the, the, the values up to date in order to run the tests. And it's also quite nice to have um, and not uh, in memory DB since um, in this case we can run a SQL statement or use something that the database provider gives us in an in-memory DB that doesn't have it or we run a SQL statement that then fails in production in a real uh, database. Before I do so, uh, public outreach. Public outreach is basically the, um, the application I'm going to showcase today and where we use this. It's used to manage CERN's more than 100,000 annual visitors. It started development last year after some time of research and planning. And it's a Java Spring Boot application running on the latest technologies. And it's very important for us because it's supporting directly CERN's mission of supporting and inspiring these being people, future generations, and all this stuff. Um, from there, I'm going to showcase a bit quickly the setup for this, and then I'm going through the improvements that we made in order to make it a bit more scalable and use it in a production environment. So the setup, of course, if you're using test containers, we need to add some dependencies. In our case, we use Gradle, so there's the three dependencies that we, mm, that we had to, to insert there, two of them directly related to, to the usage of test containers, and the third one, the container that we're going to use itself. That's an Oracle container, because we're using Oracle. And from there, we can just start having fun, and in this case, creating a test. We annotated with Spring Boot tests. OK, it's a test. And we do the add test containers. This add test containers basically tells you, please scan my class and look for add container and basically manage the life cycle of the container in the test. I also added, in this case, the auto configure test database replace none so that Spring Boot doesn't replace the database for an in-memory database like it usually does. And from there, I start. Um, creating my container. I go into the class, I do add container, I do private static, in this case I do static since I want to keep the container through all the, the whole test, otherwise it will create and start a, a container for each test that runs. And I say the add service connection, I'm going to speak about it later, and I do Oracle container, pass a Docker image, and in this case I'm overriding the username for the container as outreach. So, why did I put the add service connection? Add service connection was added with um, Spring with 3.1 integration. And basically, there's a blog post uh, on the bottom. I recommend you to, um, to, to read it. Basically, this was, came from the introduction of the connection details abstraction that came with it. And before, we would have to do this add dynamic property source. And we would have to basically, at runtime, bind the, the values to, to the context, in this case, using the defaults of the container into the data source URL, username, and password. And nowadays, with the, the abstraction, uh, the add service connection comes in and does this all automatically directly from the container, which is quite nice. So we have the configuration. We have a bit of, um, of the things that I spoke about on the left. And from there, we, I just let's test our setup. Let's see if it runs, if we have a container, if it's OK. And I just do a JDBC client, auto-wire the data source that we just provided, and then from there, I do a container is running. Is it created? 
is it running? Okay, that's good. If it comes okay, that's nice. And afterwards, what we do is, okay, let's, let's check if the database that I have available is indeed the one in my Docker image. And to do so, we create a JDBC client, and we query the banner from the, the version. And from there, it's okay. Uh, okay, we, said we tested our setup, but let's move on to some use case for public outreach in this case. And let's imagine an activity for visitors. In this case, Vox Day CERN 2025. Maybe we want to create this activity. It's of type conference. Location is at the Science Gateway. And it has a description that's a very elaborate description. In this case, it's for management. So it's a CRUD screen where we can create, read, update, delete. And then from there, the users can do their requests and use the activities that we just created. Since we have a database that's completely new, clean, we want to insert something before our tests. And to do so, we go to the before each. And it's as easy as creating an object, setting the fields that we want, and then saving to the repo. From there, we can test to get all activities, for example. I abstracted the body since we used pagination, and there was no need to complexify the slides. And in this case, I'm using MVC to do the call. And as you can see, I put some roles in there as well. And then I assert that, indeed, Vox Days is there. If I try to run this test, what will happen? The test will fail miserably, because we have a clean database. There's nothing there. There's no tables. There's nothing. So there's a couple of ways to go about it. We can start by, for example, to test out creating a, a script and initializing the container with that script. We can use some JPA flag to, to configure if you're using JPA. But in our case, since this was a brand new application, we did database control version uh, for everything. We are using Liquibase. We were like, might as well profit from that. Let's use Liquibase to apply all the change sets that we have and run directly the tests on top. And for that, we created a profile called Integration Test Oracle. And this is quite nice, because it ensures first that we have pure consistency with the production environment when it comes to the schema. And it also provides some schema validation. And also, on development time, some, some nice, cons like if you're developing a new stuff and two devs are touching the same entity, there might be some conflicts and all this stuff if you apply the changes for an environment, for example, dev or test. Uh, the only counterback to this is that the container bootstrapping takes more time. So this is, might not be relevant if we decrease the, the number of containers that we are bootstrapping. We'll see that in a moment. So this is a basic setup. You, you can read the documentation, follow, check it out. It's quite easy. But we felt like, OK, we have some, some things, but how can we improve this? How can we make it a bit more scalable and in order to make the dev team a bit more productive and not like take so much time to set up all these things. And basically, we start by isolating the container into a single configuration file. So in, that, in this case, we get a test configuration where we have a container for all the test suite. And also, you can see that I use with the reuse that I'll speak about later. And the rest is with the add container and the service connection directly there. And that's basically it on the container side. Super easy, one class, one configuration. From there, we created an annotation. And this annotation, it was something like, OK, we want to create some tests. We, have, we want the bare minimum work to do so. So you, I want to create a class and just annotate with this. And I'm currently using the container. That's what we wanted. To do so, we put some active profiles. In the first one, it's uh, Liquibase in this case. That's enabled. Some local things for our. Um, for our run, that's not that relevant. And the SQL debug, since we are running uh, a container with a database, maybe we want to improve the logging or have some extra verbosity to our logs. And then, OK, the retention policy is at runtime. We have uh, the element type, because we are going to, to annotate the classes in this case. And from there, we import our config that I showed last slide. And we also do some binding if you, we are using a, a web server. And just to assign a random port. And we also do the test containers in order to disable uh, the, this kind of tests if the machine that the tests are running on don't have Docker. Um, about the reuse, I think that we can take it a, a step further. Because OK, in the pipeline, we run the test suite usually once if everything goes OK, right? So 
but developing, that's not the case. Maybe you, you're developing tests, you are just spamming that run button after you, each test you create, we don't know. But in this case, maybe we don't need to be creating and starting a new um, container every time. So why not keep a container there? And whenever we need, no need to create, we connect, and we stop it. And that's what we do with reuse. And to, to enable it, is, as you see, you can do the dot with reuse on the container level, but you also need to adapt the test container's um, properties, dot properties file. And in this case, is to enable the test containers dot reuse dot enable to true. One key thing that I that's worth mentioning is that with all this reusability, it comes at a price that, OK, the database and the data can leak from tests. And especially if not, if not in the same test run, it might leak because the container itself is kept. Uh, so to do so, we advise to, to clean the state after each test or to use that transactional in order to roll back the state right after. And basically, this is the test we have before. I had the configuration on another slide because it was too big. We're using the same container for everything. We are rolling back the changes, so no need to, um, to be cleaning the state with, um, with the after each or something. It, it, it's quite nice. So with these two annotations only, the test containers test that I showed before and the add transactional, everything just works smoothly. It's plug and play per se. So as I said, in this case, from the developer's point of view, we create a test class, we do these two annotations, and we have some fun writing the tests. And the rest, the usage setup of the container, the running of the liquid base, and rolling back of the tests is done auto automatically. Um, final considerations that I want to point out is that, um, as I said, the tests run on, on, the same, on the same container, also liquid base. If you're doing a change and then want to roll back, uh, there might be some conflicts there if you're using the with reuse. So yeah, be advised to that. And of course, this is a bit uh, heavier on the pipeline, also increases the time for the pipeline. But since it's just one container, not one per test suite, it's quite OK. And we think that this type of overheads are quite manage manageable and justified if uh, we create more tests. So it's an incentive to, to create more tests to the dev team, you know? Next steps for us, at least, is to take uh, advantage of test containers at development time, because we have a hybrid team. And in this case, we are trying to avoid them to create a tunnel connection to the DB. And maybe they can use this at development time and profit from this connection that might be unstable, or at some point that you don't have an uh, internet connection, you can still do a couple of things. That's basically it on my end. If you have any questions, feel f please feel free to ask. And sorry, since I was a bit quick on my, on my talk, but yeah, thank you so much. <laughs>